So welcome to the For Your Thoughts podcast, where psychology, pop culture, and self meet. I'm here with my friend Q. Hey, girl. My friend, my sis, actually. Hey, yes. My Virgo sis, Kenny. Yes. Oh, <laughs> he loves Virgos, which is rare. People normally are like, ugh, Virgos. No, I mean, you guys are psychopaths, but I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your sign again? Wait, are you? I'm, I'm a Libra. A Libra. That's what it was. Okay, a Libra. Yes. Yeah, and y'all yes. kind of get along with everybody. Yes. Right? yes. I mean, we're yeah. psychopaths too. So it, it, yeah, so it, just, it works. It, works. It, may, it makes sense. <laughs> okay. So um, of course, like I always say, I always know who I want to have on the pod, but it's always about like the right moment or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to have you tell them about who you are, what she does like that. But for me, mm-hmm. I really adore like creatives in the industry and just women in the industry who literally are real and, you know, and they, and they actually care about other women. And um, when I first started to get in here, I'm not even sure how we actually met, Matt. I have no idea. Probably like one of the parties that I threw or something. Right. They just came yeah. to call each other. And I like was like, oh my God, I got to go to this party. But mm-hmm. um, I remember I was interviewing for Cinematic for an internship there. And I hit you up. Yes. Yeah, yes. So that's when we like really like met and talked like that. And mm-hmm. you were just like so cool, so sweet. Like most people just aren't that... Um, what's the word just like helpful yeah and, yeah. and transparent you know yeah, and I yeah. wasn't used to that at all I of course come from Houston from Texas and I was kind of new here and I was like damn like this is a, an actual like genuine soul yeah. so it's just like a breath of fresh air always like for mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. so tell the people like who you are like where you came I, I always say like who you were who you are and then who you are gonna be or who you plan to be or who, who you will be shit okay okay, okay. <laughs> you know? yeah. well my name is q pronounced q u e excuse me spelled q u e mm-hmm. um many people know me as a businesswoman in the music industry um i host events i do all types of productions in all lanes of music but this specifically is because I am releasing a song tomorrow, actually, 11 yes. 11. So, this is Q the singer. So, we're going to talk about who, who I am and who I will be. This is Q the, the singer songwriter. Um, and I am originally from New York, but I grew up in Atlanta. So, to speak to why it was so warm is because of that Southern hospitality. Right. I know all about it. And then, just also just being a, a Black and Brown woman in the music industry, I know how important it is to really like help each other along the way so mm-hmm. yes I'm currently based out of Jersey City um New York whenever you say like you ever see somebody put like in their bio it says like NJ slash New York and people talk yeah. they're just like that's how you know it. they live in Jersey right <laughs> <laughs> but it's all the Jersey. same it's, it's right here you know my no, it's so close <laughs> yeah it's so and close. it's so cute and peaceful I went to visit like to come like link with you and I'm like okay this is nice and it's not that far like people be OD saying that Jersey's that far they're doing the most and look most. it's cheap um I believe it's either on like Sundays or Mondays we don't have retail tax I don't know if anybody knows that but come Wait, shopping are you, Jersey. So it's yes. tax it's tax season what's it called tax day? I remember like in Texas like like right before school started it'd be like one weekend where everything yep. was Yep, so it's like every, that, but like every week. Like I, I don't know, I don't know if it's Sunday or Monday, but like that's a thing in New Jersey. Yeah. I didn't know that. So yes. I gotta go yes. shop in there. That's yes. crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. So before we get into like more of your story and stuff like that, I wanna definitely address what happened this past weekend um mm-hmm. in Houston at Astro Fest. Mm-hmm. Definitely prayers to all the families, to Travis, yes. to score yes. more. To yes. Live Nation, to yes. everybody that was involved, all of my friends who were involved, I have some friends who witnessed some like really traumatic things. Oh, they actually went. Oh yeah, they actually went okay. and like they saw some. They they saw like crazy crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um. So, uh, your perspective was literally gold. I was like, oh my god, yes. Like this is something that I I personally didn't even think don't about. Don't give me a travel penny. No, you don't have to get into it. Like get into yeah. it as much as you want to, but. Okay. Um, I really just like appreciate it because it just, it just made everything honestly make more sense for me too as someone yeah. who's not you know in rage culture or like yeah. never been to mosh pit <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can just share to the extent that you want and then of course okay. they cut out whatever we think is like yeah you know. okay cool so right. I want to preface with I am a person who is all about accountability how can I how could have I been more aware in a situation where I cannot put the blame on someone else? So to kind of start it with there, I think that it's more of a 
um, it's more of a situation where we need to be a little bit more cognizant about the generation that's coming up, um, just to kind of speak to the whole mosh pit culture, like what happened in terms of people trampling all over each other to kind of rush the stage. That is not a mosh pit, you know what I'm saying? Like exactly what happened, the rushing of the stage was not a pit formed of uh, spiritual expression. So I will start with saying that I hope that, you know, the generation and the parents of this generation kind of learn from that and kind of um, ask their kids a little bit more questions about where they're going and, and, and what they're really into to kind of get a grasp on what they're engaging in. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, yes, it's a thing of, you know, production. It's a thing of, you know, maybe Travis could have done a little bit more in terms of really just stopping the show and saying, yo, I'm not going to fucking continue until you guys get your shit together. But I do, do truly, truly think that we need to assess the generation under us. What is that? Generation X? Gen X. Yeah, X. They're X. Yes. Gen mm -hmm. X, they are, um, they're like a hybrid of us where we're kind of like, you know, fuck the system. But I think that, you know, our generation, because we come from, you know, our parents, you know, actually being a part of cultures, creating like hip hop and all of these actual movies, right. we have a little bit more direction. And we have a little more foundation that. too. Like we just right. like, our right. plans, they, they didn't play that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we was getting ass whoopings. Like we was, right. where, where you at? I don't know whose house you're right. at. Oh, you want punishment. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think that, this generation with the parents just, you know, the access that they have too. Exactly, exactly. And then the parents just being younger and, you know, wanting to be a bit more free spirited, which is completely fine. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to make it a thing where we're getting down on the parents and shit. But I do think that, you know, moving forward, everyone does need to be a little bit more into what Gen Z is into and kind of teaching them to protect their spirits and protect their souls. Because, you know, if, if they have been armed, with those tools to, you know, truly protect their souls, I personally don't think that they would have been mm -hmm. ejected, you know, like that. Right. But and if you can, because people aren't going to understand <laughs> what you mean in a yeah. sense to, uh, well, some people might, but yeah. um, like the spiritual part about that culture, since yeah. you, like you, you definitely moshed before, you're definitely yeah. spiritual. Oh yeah, person. oh yeah. That's that a great me... segue into everything else we're going to talk about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like me and, me, me and my boyfriend, we are, we've been to Travis shows, multiple shows. We get in the pit. Um, I've definitely busted a knee or two. Mm -hmm. um, but when you go, you are going to let your spirit kind of live between these two uh, spaces. So when you go, you know, and I can, I can only speak for myself and, you know, my friends who I know, you know, who are in the culture, but when you go, you know, you have to prepare for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. You have to prepare from every way from, you know, making sure you're drinking enough water, mm -hmm. understanding that you probably shouldn't be drinking alcohol, you know, you know, smoke your weed or do whatever to kind of enhance that experience for you, but alcohol dehydrates you. So, you know, just little stuff like that. And then just actually preparing your spirit to be safe while it's kind of in this, you know, space where it's kind of hanging out with everybody else's spirit, right. you would have needed to prepare your spirit to be doing that. So based on everybody's, you know, personal spiritualities, those practices can be different. But I, I truly think that that's what mosh pit culture is about. You know, you're, you're agreeing to being in that space where, you know, your spirit may be out, out of your body for a second, because that's also music. Music is a spiritual. Right. Thing. And like you, know, you were saying, you're like, um, of course, we are not everyone should be accountable, but we're also not blaming Trav. I'm not blaming, everyone just needs to be accountable we're for their own. Yeah, we're not blaming all. anyone. We're not blaming anyone. And Travis was in a, in a trance. Like when you yes. perform, like you are in a whole trance. Even when yes. I am on stage, like doing interviews, like you're in a whole different like wavelength yes. and it, it is a spiritual thing. So it's like, I don't, I'm not sure if people like, you know, took that into account. And then also people, yeah. people don't know anything about mosh culture and they just are like, they don't even know that that's happening. Like they're right. like, oh, it's a bunch of kids. Right. Try to hit each other in the fucking face and all right. that stuff. Exactly. Like, not, exactly. It's like, it's Especially for us, like it's, if you didn't grow up in the South where like Waka Flocka was a thing when mm. we was growing up, that was kind of like our introduction to, to Mosh for our culture. Right. And even though it's not a new thing for us, it was like, oh, Waka. And then just how it moved your body. You're like, you sort of oh, felt like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a perfect segue into, okay, your song is coming out. Mm -hmm. It's called Cry. It comes out, what, tomorrow? Well, today. This is going to be today. At midnight. Yes. Midnight. Okay. Yeah. So how do you feel? How do you feel? 
I feel great. I'm I'm nervous. I'm excited. I literally like not even exaggerate. Have not been sleeping. Like I'm just up from nerves I'm, or from work. I'm just. I don't know. I don't even know if I want to say it's nerves, right? Because like nerves is attached to like negative anxiety. I think I'm just excited. Right. Now that's really so exciting. Excited. Right. Like I'm finally in this position. Like um, I, cause I used to sing, like when I was in high school, like I was known as the singer, like mm -hmm. my superlative was most likely to be famous and I would perform at certain little, you know, talent shows and things like that. So like, for me, it's kind of just, I'm really excited to just kind of check in with like my child self and say, Hey, like, I know we kind of left this off that note that we did wherever my mind was at when I said I didn't right. want to do it anymore but to kind of be able to loop back in and be like hey girl we're back and we're mm -hmm. dropping a song right. I feel really fucking great I think that the song itself is such a beautiful record like it the messaging like when you know myself and you know my 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 bestie my good good sis yes love her we were, yes when we were sitting and we were writing um it was definitely emotional for like everybody in the room. So we just knew, you know, what it, what it was for us and hopefully what it'll, mm -hmm. it'll do for other people. But I think it's a, it's a beautiful song, mostly because it has a bop, you know, you could, you know, get your little groove on, smoke your tree, do what, do whatever. But like the messaging, like the messaging is mm -hmm. so on point and to speak back to, you know, what happened at Astro World, you know, something like this song and the messaging of that, I think will help people you know carry through that situation and then just kind of just continue to move through because we're coming off of the age of the of the Aquarius you know what I mean like we're mm -hmm. we're in a space where our talents are supposed to be for each other and supposed to be for the next generation so I, I take that very seriously and so with this song and with the rest of my music like we're talking about stuff we're we're gonna dance and you know mm -hmm. we're gonna get our shit off a little bit because yeah. Mosh pit culture. I'm gonna give you. I'm right. gonna give you the record. I'm gonna be in that whole life. <laughs> <give you the record. laughs> so, okay, let's. So let's go back then, so people yeah. get a better perspective. Because I love, I love stories like this. I love when like all like you know you go through life or whatever, but like you never know like what you're gonna use, what's gonna you know come back around. But literally, mm -hmm. like God's spirit is always like working in your favor with every experience, yeah. and then yeah. it all just comes into this full circle if you are you know making sure you're walking in the right or in the in whatever direction or whatever I don't, right. I don't think say right or wrong but um right. so for you you said that uh, when you were younger you were definitely more so like in the forefront an artist a singer mm -hmm. we're actually doing that and then one day you were just like okay I'm not feeling this because it's like it just didn't feel like was, was it authentic like how would you describe it it just didn't feel right because you were so young like how how'd you know yeah, I, I was so young, but like this, this person that I am today in terms of like being so in tune with my spirituality, I've always been that person. Yeah. So like, even like when I was younger and I was like, like super young, like being a kid and just being like, mm, I don't like the energy in this room That's and everybody, oh yeah. And then, you know, the adults kind of perceiving that as you being like rude or disrespectful. And it's like, mm -hmm. nah, I'm actually just in tune. Right. So with that being said, I just kind of felt like. I remember the moment too. I used to um, perform at this spot called Club Endenu. Um, mm -hmm. It was downtown Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It was downtown okay. Atlanta, and um, like I did a couple sets there. Like they they really you know fucked with me and supported me. Um, and I was on stage, and I just kind of looked out, and and I mean I was a kid. Like there were adults in the crowd, so they weren't like being like you know mean or anything. But I just kind of looked out, and I had this perspective change of you know, there are people here, you know, judging me, they don't know where I come from, you know, what exactly I'm trying to do. But like, they have the power to judge me off of this one performance or this one interaction. And I literally got off stage. And I was just like, I think that I need to kind of give them something like, a little bit not not more true but just more purposeful to yeah, judge something that they could really like feel like not yeah yeah like yeah. if you're gonna judge something I don't wanna and it's like I'm a kid so I'm not like mad at myself for my influences but like at that time like I wanted to be the next fucking Sierra which is great because Sierra right, yeah he loves Cece you know right he love her but I think for me it just didn't make sense like I was like I need to experience life I need to really like come into myself even now like I'm coming more into my my Native American culture and really yeah. doing that purpose and if I had 
become a singer then it would have been either a harder to transition into you know who I am today or b it, it might not have ever happened right. and I was just so in tune with the fact that like this isn't it I don't know what is but I know I'll, I'll, I'll always music is literally my first love like I you know when you're younger obviously the only people that you know are like your family members mm-hmm the only other person that I knew was Michael Jackson, which I'm sure is the same for a lot of us, right? right, right. But I took that super seriously. Mm-hmm. I was just like, no, the music, the everything, like the short film, um, what's it? The one with Annie, Annie, are you okay in it? But it was like a short film on like VHS tape. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember right. that movie, yeah. But I watched that shit every day. Like I was super like with the fucking remote in my hand, like this shit is awesome. I don't know what the (laughs) fuck, but But I'm in it. it. Like this is right. Right. So I just, I just took every thought and every, every feeling of intuition that kind of came to me about anything that surrounded music. I just took it really seriously. And I told my mom, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I went to college and then here we are yeah. today. <laughs> right. And then you went, but then you went on and you still worked in music and you still mm-hmm. worked with artists. So yeah. like, talk about that journey as well, because that is like, all of that leads you to full circle to where you are now. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I went to school. Um, I started out at Clayton State University, um, which is in Clayco, um, Atlanta, Georgia. So I did that for, I think I did that for two years. And then I was like, I need that big school experience, like literally coming from watching How High because representation (laughs) matters. I was like, I want that. (laughs) You're like, I'm trying to do that. Oh my God. I was like, all right. So now I'm people normally say like a different world or something like that. You're talking about How High. That is so funny. Like, (laughs) look, my parents, my parents are hip hop heads, bro. Like everything was Wu Tang, Tribe Called Quest. So it was like, Mm -hmm. How High. Um, so then I go to the University of Alabama, which was the best two years, hands down, of my entire life. It really, really shaped me seriously. You know, being in the heart of um, a transcending racist place, it really just changes you like completely. Um, but I love that experience. Um, then I, you know, was given the opportunity, well, not the opportunity, but I was given the option of you either sit down on academic probation or you just figure it out. And I was like, you know what? This isn't working for me anymore. Mm-hmm. And I went back to Atlanta, started hanging out with like all the art kids in Atlanta. I don't know if, you know, everybody's familiar with New, New Atlanta 2-9 and mm-hmm. my homie Steve-O, he really just like ushered me into like that whole space. And yeah. I was like, all right, word, like I'm back in it in a different way but I'm back in it um kind of just moved around in that for a bit you know curated some events Um, shout out to Paula my good sis Paula she helped me curate my first ever event with Saint Beauty I don't know Mm -hmm. if you know the band Saint Beauty um I don't but check check them out I will Um, yeah but after that I what I was working at Victoria's Secret and then I quit and I was just like girl what are you doing and um one of my friends at the time he knew q-tips manager mm-hmm. and he put me on and I literally handed in my res my resume maybe like three months before tip even called me so I thought I didn't get it right and Tip just like texts me and was like hey this is q-tip just randomly one day hey, that's so crazy to get a message be like hey this q-tip and you I'm like, like fucking fake like are you kidding me like, this can't be real. <laughs> right so I'm like, uh, yeah, we could hop on the phone. And he's like, yo, um, you know, I want to interview you. And I'm like, I'm on the first China bus to New York. Like, I think it was like a Tuesday and I left on like a Friday. And you were I, moving back? Well, I mean, at that time I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything. And my mom was kind of like, well, just come home. Cause she lived, you know, back in New York at that time. She was like, just come home, just sit down for a second. You know, right. you have somewhere to stay. Just, you know, get your mind right. Mm-hmm. And right when I spoke to her, and and figure that out that next day is when I got that crazy and I was like oh hell yeah this is it yeah this This, is this this is is what I'm supposed to be doing right so I hop on a China bus to New York my mom picks me up 
um i literally change clothes in the car that she picks me up and we drive over to where tip is i interview with him and i just remember like the biggest thing that i said to him he was like you know well i'm interviewing other people and i was like that's great so they can either work with me or <laughs> really care what they're doing but this is my job <laughs> And he really got a kick out of that. And he fucked with me. I, I was with him for two years. I did everything from, I started out as his personal assistant and I worked into, um, like I did some set assistant work for like the last uh, Tribe music video. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I left and moved on to cinematic, I realized that he had given me a Tribe Called Quest management credits at the end of the video, which he didn't even tell me. I literally was just watching the video. And, it and was I there. just sat there fucking crying three months later. <laughs> that is so dope. Yeah, so Tip really That's like crazy. ushered me in. Like he's he's my big brother, he's my mentor. He's, Q-Tip is everything. Q -tip what is would you say is like the biggest lesson that you've learned, like not even career-wise, I'm talking mm -hmm. like, spiritual mental life wise mm -hmm. like what's something that either learned by just watching him or that he's actually like said um so I guess we can get personal this is a part of my story mm -hmm. um so I spent a few weeks sleeping in my car um my my family lived in upstate New York, which was about an hour drive away from Tip's house. And I was doing it every day. It was fine. But then my car started to break down. So mm -hmm. I was just like, I can risk going home and then my car not starting and then not mm -hmm. being able to get to work. And so I made the executive decision to sleep in my car and um, Q-Tip caught on to it and he was fucking furious. He was like, how dare you? be in a system of literal tribal unity and not let your tribe know that you need help. Wow. So I think that that was my biggest thing um, was just when you have your tribe and that's your fucking tribe, you take care of your tribe. And, right. um, you know, shit worked out. Like it was, it was yeah. so, it was such a very small time that I did it and I was transitioning into getting my apartment, but like Q-Tip, he definitely looked out um, and we made it work. And so, right. that, yeah, that's the biggest thing is like, yo, when you find your tribe, everybody's not your tribe. Sometimes you just work right. with people, you know what I'm saying? But when you find your tribe, you make sure you fucking look out for them. Right, and, and make sure that you ask for help. I think that's another yes. like really good lesson is like, also like people don't know these stories. Like I have stories just like that, like maybe yeah. not sleeping, you know, but it's, people have no idea like what yeah. we've gone through to get to where we are. All, yeah. all they see is like, the finished pretty you know exactly. product of it all or whatever exactly. so asking for help is one thing I really sucked at and so suck at. unless it's like my mama like I really suck right right um and so that asking for help and then also community and and knowing who that community is because everyone is not yours and it's hard right because it's like you don't want to ask for help excuse me already being a black woman right mm -hmm. you, we're already prideful and we don't want handouts and we want people to know that we worked for what we have right. so that we can stand on our throne and say, I fucking worked for this shit. Mm -hmm. So to kind of, you know, find that balance of asking. And then, like you said, is like, you know, finding the tribe and trusting the tribe, mm -hmm. like all of that shit is trial and error. But, you know, if you're mm -hmm. attached to spirit, you know, you, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you feel you it, know. you feel it, mm -hmm. you feel it. Yep. Um, it's another thing that like you said this time and, and also during dinner and it's a great it, it was like great advice that I wish I would have heard and it's kind of kind of like about owning it and like your confidence and like being someone that people want to actually work with mm -hmm. and kind of just like it's not it's not really playing the game but it's just like being you like being you don't yeah. be like a stiff ass board you know right. or whatever the case may be so kind of speak right. more to that because I know you work you've had interns you've worked with different people and mm -hmm. um what I've noticed is like you can be, of course, be talented, of course, work hard, but another thing is be like a personable person, like yeah. in a sense. So kind of like speak to that as someone who's like ushered in people into, you know, cinematic or wherever and just work with like young talent, like yeah. some advice on that part of things. You know what I mean? I, mean I, I feel like that's my biggest thing. Like when I'm interviewing people or when I'm just meeting people, like I'm looking at like the character and the quality of person. Like I don't really care what you do like obviously I want to make sure that what you're trying to do aligns with what mm -hmm. I'm doing and it makes sense for both of us but I do want to just work with good people because I really strive to be a good person like I <laughs> I was such a little fucking like hall monitor ass 
get no because that needs that's not to, right <laughs> you know what I'm saying like when I was a kid so like when I you know went through that period where you know you get hit and hit over the head with like your childhood traumas and you're like oh shit like who do I want to be mm-hmm. that was one of my biggest things it's like yo I kind of like and you know people generally love me but then there's the other half people who don't understand me mm-hmm. and so my biggest thing was I was a little shithead how can I like be true to who I am? Because I'm sorry, like I'm, I, I am running the show. So you need to fall in the fuck line. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, how can I be that? Mm-hmm. But also not make people like miserable while they're- Yeah, working. or like super intimidated or whatever. Yeah, like I, I, I don't want that fucking energy. Like I, I'm super like chill and casual. Like, and I think that that's why- I was able to get like a really good set of interns because like our energy is just like word like do Mm -hmm. your job I really don't give a shit what you do outside of that bro like do your job text me back and whatever if you you want it you're gonna do it but this is I'm just here to help you you know I'm just doing God's work by helping you it's ultimate it's it's like how far you want to go on this shit is really up to you that's up to you you, right as as long as you get what I need done yeah all right yeah Let's yeah, but no, I think I think that that's that's super big. And to also speak to, you know, my singing career and my team, everyone in my team were were all friends first. Like, I don't think that because, you know, they say, you know, you can't work with your, you know, your friends and your family, which I understand that part of it, because when you mix business and pleasure, the waters get a little murky. But like, I just don't see it working any other way for me. Right. You know I and mean? like, it needs to be that genuine, authentic. Like I need to be able to just like spaz out or somebody needs to be able to have a bad day and there's no judgment because we just know each mm-hmm. other. And it's just mm-hmm. like, yo, let Q do what she's doing. Right. Circle back. She doesn't right. mean it. And then it also gives me space to be vulnerable enough to apologize or to address mm-hmm. it and it just kind of mm-hmm. clears that air a little bit better so and not that like stuffy fake like off yeah. vibe where it's like you know someone's pissed off or you exactly. know something is like the passive aggressiveness like it just takes exactly. all that out exactly. which is the most annoying part about working like anywhere honestly yes yes right <laughs> right okay so all of that led you to here now and, and you're still working in music for sure mm-hmm. um but it also like you're gonna use i'm sure use all that you learn all your tools um for your music now right Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. tell us more about like who like who you're going to be as an artist where Mm -hmm. it comes from and let's like let's get more into that okay cool so um I guess we could kind of just start out with um on some like marketing press release shit right because I'm also a marketer so I have to be a marketer and an artist at the same time Mm -hmm. um my like we kind of said before like my content is very like message based um I definitely don't want to make music that is going to confuse anybody or stir them in what would be the wrong direction if they aren't already being guided Mm -hmm. um so it's going to be very um Erica Badu-esque in terms Mm -hmm. of the writing and you know uh very uh what's the I'm drawing a blank but just like from from who I came from right like working with tribe and you know working with like super spiritual and intent you know just with intent because like we can also go to D'Angelo which is like one of my biggest music um influences it's like he was talking about relationships and you know having sex but it wasn't sex it was making love and it was that connection to another human being and the reverence to another person and seeing yourself in that other person so just a lot of things that are just like everything that I'm going to do is just going to be full of intent there's going to be purpose we're going to have a good time and I'm going to party and I'm going to do everything the press runs and everything that I'm supposed to do but there's going to be no question that everything that I'm doing is is for a reason on, mm-hmm. on the bigger scale. So, and then we can kind of get back into like my um, musical influences, uh, Erica Badu for sure, D'Angelo, Outkast, um, just kind of growing up in Atlanta when Outkast was becoming and became like just mm-hmm. how they just changed our just whole lives. Our, yeah, no, they really- everything, our minds about shit, yeah. you know, the way that we took in music how they were able to kind of reintroduce you know funk and 
you know, the psychedelic type music to us, but make it hip hop and then mm-hmm. also show that respect to tribe and just just how they kind of even it. be like be like we yeah. like be weirdos. Not, not, not like we yeah yeah black people get to be weird. We are not just one thing, and they really showed that they were funky, exactly. they were weird, they were you know exactly. like quirky. I hate the word weird, whatever you know. Yeah, what I mean? no, yeah. but up so outcast um melanie fiona she's a huge oh, one good. i actually met her on some fangirl shit i'm like sitting in a walmart with her cd like crying like oh my god <laughs> and she's like whose little sister is this <laughs> yeah that's so cute and i feel like she's such a sweetheart like she's, she's super such sweet. a sweetie i actually saw a thread on twitter the other day where someone was like yo drop your melanie fiona stories and it was just like a thread of just like how sweet, she sweet stuff is. yeah like, no, I bet. um so- and Mm-hmm, go ahead. I want to say one more. One okay, more. She's a big one for me. Ashanti. Oh, the yes. princess. The How do you feel about her? She's getting an award. She's getting a um. Is it She's getting soul or something like that? About yeah, like yeah, like woman of the decade or yeah. But people like were person. You know, Twitter were going in about like, is it soul? Like they were, you know. What do you um, think? Um, Ashanti is soul. I don't know yeah. what the fuck they thought. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, how soon do people forget? Like, damn, we can we can love what's new and still appreciate what. Yeah, no, we were all baby, singing like, all of that. Like, rain damn. on me, like, Come on, bro, like in the way that she just flipped fucking um Isaac Hayes records, like that. Uh, that's a soulful sis, okay? <laughs> that's fact. That's fact. People yeah. were going in on it. They were like, I guess, I giving her more like. Like she's more like a bubblegum ish, but I was like, I don't no. know. So she might have no. something like that, but nah. I mean, she was like one of um she was like on some like Nivea type shit, like on some being like real like pop. She kind right. of did that. Cause remember, Shanti dropped before I hate to, I don't, I hope I do not get no shit for this. But Ashanti as a solo artist dropped before Beyonce as a solo artist. So Ashanti paved the way for that R and B pop sound. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, because like when you think of records like um, "Oh Baby," super annoying mm-hmm. and pop, right? But then you listen to her albums, and that shit is funky and soulful. And soulful. That's yeah. what it is. People yeah. are definitely thinking more so about what they heard on the radio and not deep diving, like you yeah. know how they how they love to do. So yeah. that's definitely yeah. what that's about. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> um, Obviously, everything is definitely a lot of spirituality in it, a lot of soul, a lot of um, experiences and stuff like that. So I do want to ask you about your own personal mental health and spiritual journey. Um, Like what, you know, however you want to attack that question and what you're comfortable with as well. Um, And mind you, a lot of people that listen are going through things or they're just like, like we all are going through shit. Like we all have our shit. Um, So, yeah. Okay, so with that, I'll make reference to the song Cry, um, mm-hmm. my single that's dropping, you know, yeah. drop, you know, another little, <laughs> little drop. Right. Um, so basically, the song is about, like, the verses themselves is kind of like me um, kind of going back and forth with understanding my connection to a higher purpose and a higher being, but also mm-hmm. being, like, human and crying, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So... I think that the best thing that anybody can do for their mental selves and their spiritual selves is to honor every state that you're in. Let yourself go through those states, Mm -hmm. but princesses and princes do not feel sorry for themselves Mm -hmm. and we get our shit together and Mm -hmm. we stay focused. So I think it's like, it's just finding that balance of okay, you know, you know, my mom upset me today. It might take you the whole day. When me and my mom get into it, it definitely takes me the whole day to recover because that's my vessel and that's important right. to me and it affects me and that's okay. But tomorrow, sis, hit them emails again because you're right. doing something. So that's just the biggest thing is finding that balance of being okay that you're being sad, being okay that sometimes you do have to be depressed. Like on some real, because I know we you, kind of you have to that feel that around. right. Like sometimes you literally have to drop into a fucking black hole, mm-hmm. stay there two, three, four, five, six a year, mm-hmm. and then when you decide and when your spirit has connected with being okay, get the fuck up, For get real. up. 
For so real. that that's that's the best that I can say. Obviously, there's different ways everybody practices that. You know, right. there's yoga, there's reading, there's writing. Um, I'm a huge advocate for getting a fucking journal. Like, mm-hmm. write that oh shit. God. We always like on journaling on here, so they yeah. know what's up. They know what's up. Write yeah. that shit. Out. Yeah, it's so like your journal, and you'll be able to see like how like all the old shit, and then it's just it's mm-hmm. crazy, and just let it yep. out. A lot of times, just things just like all pins up in our head. Let yep. it out. Write it cry cry it out like you have to feel it I think that a lot of our turmoil the inner turmoil comes from people trying to like hold it in in whatever way and just like you just have to mask it it's like no don't 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 fake the funk like you sad be sad of course Mm -hmm. it's not easy it's not easy to be sad especially if you don't have a support system around you who would understand or whatever so we've been conditioned to not feel sad you know it's like okay if you cry stop crying and when you're young you know, right. you can laugh, you can smile, but as soon as you cry, it's like, oh my God, like this baby is crying. It's like, this right. baby is feeling and it's like, it, you know, we need to go through those motions. So I think that's one thing that's very important. Like, just feel it. And what's crazy is when you feel it, whether it's those three days, two days, you literally feel like a whole new person. Just so like much better. Days later. Like, Bro, when you get that cry, you ever have that cry where like your eyes are just so pressed together to the point where like it hurts. Yes. You to, like you've been uh, uh, <laughs> so, like do that, do Literally. that yourself because then you're gonna like when you done, mm-hmm. you're just gonna look around and be like, girl, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> <laughs> or that cry when it's like you literally can't breathe and you like on the floor and it's like yes. you and then you kind of be like girl okay you just like, yes. lay down. look you know when you feel it in your chest like you really feel like your heart broke like let it yeah. breathe. let, let it, it let it like those are all things that we literally have to feel yep. literally yep. okay so going on more so that's another okay the spiritual part about it and then also mm-hmm. um i want to talk more about your roots because obviously mm-hmm. that's definitely where a lot of your spirituality comes from and that also mm-hmm. plays into the song so let people know i'm sure they'll see what do we what's the name of your this is a uh, deer bone okay so for, for so for the people who are listening and not watching we're talking about it, it's it's still a necklace though right it's a necklace yes it's a choker. <laughs> look yeah, we're fashionable talking, we're trendy it's yes. a choker we're talking about her choker <laughs> um and just so go on and tell people about like you know where you're from and just yes. like all the parts yes. of you yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, my really both of my parents, but mostly my mom, is Ramapo Lenape Native American. So that is a Native American tribe of like New Jersey. If anybody's familiar with Mawa, New Jersey, so kind of extending from Mawa, New Jersey, to kind of going like upstate, not like Buffalo upstate. Like it's really like maybe an hour and a half away. It's not that crazy. Um, but kind of extending, you know, upstate. Um. So yes, that is my culture. That is my heritage. So speaking to the necklace, because I know that sounds real like mad voodoo, like why is she walking around with bones? But speaking to, you know, one of the points of, you know, showing that reverence to um, other life on, Mm -hmm. on this earth is when natives, you know, hunt, they use all of what is given to them you know what I'm saying you don't just eat the meat you know you use the hide for clothing and then you use the bones for necklaces and or jewelry whatever whatever but you're making sure you're getting the fullest use of that animal and that's how resources yeah that's how you mm-hmm. show respect toward you know taking that life but in mm-hmm. you know in the grand scheme you took a life to create so that that's kind of the background of that mm-hmm. so you told me a story about how you got, I'm not sure what it exactly it was that was happening. Um, was the new year? Yes. So what it was, was the, it? okay. Yeah. So the native American new year is actually the celebration of the spring equinox. Mm-hmm. We do not celebrate a new year when the earth is still dead. We celebrate it when the earth is blooming. So I actually had the honor of, cause you know, kind of getting back into, cause me and Makeda had this conversation because Makeda is also native American and we were having this conversation about, um, there's this show on FX, it's called Reservation Dogs, Reservation and it's Dogs. about, yeah, it's about um, Native Americans, like some Native kids, like on the res, but you kind of mm-hmm. see that influence, like they're so influenced by like, you know, hip hop, but they're still like Native, right? So there's this whole experience of Native Americans right now, because there's not many of us, right. we have so many different experiences of being Native American, and so 
with my upbringing, it was more so a point of like, you know, you're Native American, this is your family. Like, obviously you can look out into your family. Like my family lives in the goddamn woods. You know what I'm saying? Like- yeah, Which is crazy because I feel like, like, like we were saying at dinner, like whenever we think of a of someone who's you know of who's who's black or of you know African African American descent and they're mm-hmm. like oh you know they're they're Native American it's like that you know oh like girl you got Cherokee but it's like right, nah right. like and we're like nah dead ass like like for real for not, real Look. I'm for real for real right like, and we're not taking anything away from the Cherokee because the misconception all. about Cherokee is that that's just the that was one of the biggest tribes in the South. So if you're in the right. South and you say native, I mean, more than likely you, you probably you're going to be somewhere between, you know, Seminole, which is in Florida, um, Blackfoot, uh, Ir- is it either Iroquois or Tuscarorin. Those are um, like North Carolina, South Carolina tribes. So you're, you might be, yeah. but there is that stereotype of just like, oh, if you think that you're native, you are Cherokee. And it's like, yeah. no, there's so many different like nations and we all have different experiences, you know, being, you know, you know, more modernized, but to my experience, it's like, you know, I'm growing up, I'm spending time on, you know, the land and I'm being told like, you know, you're Native American, you're Native American. I'm looking around at my family. Um, You know, we're going to powwows and, you know, which is a Native American family reunion, basically. Okay. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Now I literally like talking to you, I'm learning, we don't know much about indigenous culture at all and it's so yeah. it's actually sad i mean i'm actually. still learning right but because they you try to erase us from exactly history. yeah yeah okay so, so how, yeah so yes yeah, like i'm growing up and i have like these you know very specific instances and you know i know that i'm native american my mother is telling me do not stand up for the pledge of allegiance that is that does not serve us very specifically to us in the native culture um, black people too, black Americans too, but for us, it's kind of like it's 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 a different energy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you know, I moved up here to you know to take the job with Q Tip, and now I'm you know closer to the res. Mm-hmm. And um, this year, I was invited to come to the I forgot like the actual name of it, but it is our new year. You know, celebrating the, the spring equinox you have to be there like before sunset. So we were out there maybe like 4.30 in the morning. We got to like have a cousin, you know, walk us through the woods because, you know, there's bear and there's deer and they're trained to wrestle and protect. So you have to have a guide into the woods. Um, And we, you know, we walk up and where like the story of our tribe specifically begins is at a stone, it's called, um, split rock and literally it's at the top of like a small mountain and it's it's this huge boulder and it's literally just split right in half mm-hmm. like just really on some like spirit type shit right you know? some like lightning from the gods and like this thing is still here, it right in still the, right right in the fucking middle um so i get up there you know i'm being told like you know this is where like you know we used to come as kids and there's only five of us up there there's me Um, another aunt who's an elder and then there's three men who are elders so Mm -hmm. for me this was like really pivotal because not only am I the youngest person there but I'm also a woman and not even for native culture because in native culture there isn't really we're honored in our culture so that's not really the biggest thing but for me coming from American culture it's like, oh shit, like I'm a woman and I'm here and right. I'm the youngest one here. Um, and then we have our offerings. Um, there's like tobacco and corn, um, I believe like sage. And we, you know, say a prayer. And that's really the first time I had heard our, um, our language is called Muncie. Mm-hmm. And that's the first time that I had heard someone speak it like directly in front of me. Like they were just like rattling, going at it, like, yeah, going off. And I'm just like, yo, this is like some storybook shit, and this is real. So yeah. for me, that was kind of like confirmation. Like, yes, yeah, it's like this is real. Not that I never felt like it wasn't real, but this is real, and you have work to do, and you have to kind of bear that responsibility of your culture as the next generation and make sure Mm -hmm. that a the rest of the world knows that you're here and even on the the smallest form is you know make sure your kids know what the fuck this is about they are yeah yeah and also just like hearing it on like a positive way like you know like just having like that legacy aspect of it as well like I think we talked about that a lot too because of course 
as you all know, I'm Kenyan as well. And like, I'm in that same um, space of like embracing it more. I just came back from being at home for like two months and just so much about it. I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I'm like, this is it. Like, I feel this in a different way. I've never felt anything before. And it's a responsibility to just make things better for, you know, for the past, for the future, for the present. Um, so definitely kudos to you for doing that. Like that, like, like I honor you for doing that as well. And it, and it, you're someone I can talk to about that type of stuff. Yeah, Cause it's like yeah. definitely hard to understand yeah. in a sense. Yeah. So, and even just you, like, even just you, like your story period, it's like, you've already kind of like honored it by doing, yeah. doing what you want to do in this life, pivoting right. when you need to not right. giving up, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like you're doing what you need to do as a woman yeah. um, in this space. So I'm super excited to see like how that unfolds. Like, yes, me you too, know what I mean? Man. Like it, it, it was written. Nice. It, was, no, it, it really was, it really was written. <laughs> um, it was another thing you talked about, which is another thing that I have in my culture as well. Um, like, like addictions and things like that. Mm -hmm. specifically to alcohol a lot of kenyans are it's a thing like addicted to alcohol yeah. um and you talked about that as well so i don't even know what the question was i had for mm -hmm. that or if i even have one yeah, but yeah. you like talk about that more and like what you're actively doing to make sure that you know you don't go into that path i i think about that a lot and then just yeah. like your family that you know all that all that type of stuff or just your mm -hmm. thoughts on it period or experiences right so my mom just kind of growing up my mom growing up in the age that she did like she really felt the um weight of our family being consumed with alcoholism um I think that on a on a larger scale you know everybody's okay right but you know we if we can be frank and you know be honest about with ourselves about what it is you know they do you know deal with alcoholism so my mom dealing with that, dealing with like, you know, on some like, had to go pick her uncle up on some like 16 years old, got to drive the car to go pick uncle up or whomever, right? Mm -hmm. So that was like a big thing with me growing up is that my mom just, I, I never really saw my mom drink at all. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the uncles and the rest of the family did, but specifically my mom wasn't a drinker. And then my dad, he was just on some just regular New York shit and he would just right. drink Heineken. You know what I'm saying? I never really right. saw him drink for real. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything, everybody's just a goddamn pothead. Right. Um, <laughs> so I think just like the representation of, you know, not being sheltered from the reality, but also not seeing my vessels abuse it kind of transcended to me on some like, okay, well, that's not what we're doing over here. Right. Um, and then obviously, you know, kind of just getting older and, you know, really seeing it for what it was. And I mean, I was a kid. I went to college. Like I definitely have some nice and you're getting like, you know, super fucked up. Oh, but for, for sure. me, mm -hmm. it's just not thank you know, thankfully, it's just not for me. Like mm -hmm. being drunk, like I I don't mind, you know, grabbing a, you know, a glass or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I I'm 30 now, I'm grown. So, you know, I got right. my wine, you know. Of course. Yeah. Which is fine, but for me, I just was never I never really fucked with the whole thing of like, you know, getting super drunk. Um, I understand why people do. And I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, here to say addiction is, is a hell of a thing. And right. alcohol is the only thing people could be addicted to. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but yeah, it just, it, it just, it didn't make sense for me seeing what my culture went through with it. And then knowing myself and knowing that I don't really fuck with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that just my goal is like to yo it's about balance like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a libra at its freaking core like enjoy life enjoy things but find your balance find what makes sense for you um you won't ever hear me unless it's on some like it's a simile or a metaphor you won't hear me you know singing about drugs and, and alcohol just because that's not what i want to put out um and i also just want to make it a point to you know, as much as possible, you know, not feel like I have to align myself with those types of brands as, you know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is, right? And I have to be honest that I do enjoy a drink. So you're For going sure. to see it, but I want to, you know, do everything that I possibly can do to make sure that it's not like a part of my brand. You know what right. I'm saying? So yeah, right. that's kind of right. how I... That makes sense. That's kind of like, so my mom, my mom's dad um, passed away from alcoholism and her brother, like her mm -hmm. closest brother or whatever. Yeah. So um, her thing was like, as soon as we got to a certain age or whatever, she kind of like, and of course we, she, we weren't like super sheltered or anything like that. So we had a good time, whatever, mm -hmm. but she like sat like us down, each of us and was like, okay, like this is in your family. 
just letting you know that so you don't because you know you never I feel like addicts you don't know that you're going there you just end up there and you're like oh shit like I'm addicted or whatever so yep. she took it upon herself which I'm so grateful for be like hey this is in your bloodline um it's the way that they've coped with things um it's the way that Kenya coped with things so yeah. you don't know because you're not there when I went yeah. out was there I was like oh shit like this is really a thing so she's yeah. like you know just to be like have it in our conscious you know because once it's there it's like oh shit like let me chill out or whatever yeah. so um that's just been always been a thing that I've always been like, okay look we we love to have a good time we love to mm-hmm. you know have a cocktail or whatever but we know what we can and can't keep do it cute and- Keep it exactly cheap. and everyone's different <laughs> some people can do that and it works for them some people can't like i'm the type to the next day i will literally if if i go too hard I, nothing's getting done like you know like my mind is just like no, mm-hmm. there is no cognitive function like it's just like right. and then you just I, took a day from yourself for what it's like damn i could have drunk one it. less drink and been totally fine you know <laughs> right right exactly so speaking of that i'm super duper into like wellness and things like that as well mm-hmm. and I know that you y'all be juicing you and Romel be juicing yeah. so yeah. cute I like just jamming <laughs> out and to being so cute so um why do you juice like what's your mm-hmm. thing about it I haven't I'm been doing smoothies juicing it's like the whole process I have a juicer well my, my roommate does but the whole process seems like a lot it's but, tedious. It's yeah tedious. and yeah. I want to do it more but definitely yeah. tell me like you know like your your benefits why you do it and stuff like mm-hmm. that so Q-Tip actually put me onto juicing. Um, okay. That was like one of one of my duties is like, you know, come in the house, walk my dog, make me a, a, a juice, right? And amongst a lot of other things, but obviously uh, wealth and being around wealthy people, you're a little bit more cognizant of your health because you kind of to speak to life insurance, like the whole concept is you actually value your life. The longer you live, the more money you make. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like the premise of, you know, being wealthy is being healthy, right? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I used to juice a lot for him. He introduced me to all like the um, the wheatgrass and all that stuff. So I kind of just took that for myself. And I guess like literally when we were uh, told to stay home, got, you know, the stay at home mandate, I literally mm-hmm. just copped the juicer. I was like, I'm not fucking around. Um, I know that we're not going to be able to be outside. We can't get vitamin D as much as we right. did before. We're going to be in this house sharing, you know, air with everybody. And let's just start our holistic journey here and just so that we're good. So I literally started on um, last year, March. And I think for me, with juicing and what I've grown to understand just about like overall health is that just generally speaking, we don't we as Americans, we have a poor understanding of the balance of nutrients that we need. Mm -hmm. So really, it's just like that extra kick of like all the shit that I should be eating that I'm not like, right, like a a basic plate that anyway, I grew up on, you know, in the South is meat, 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 for real, fried, 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 you know, bean, macaroni and cheese and then like a little corner of like a fucking some collard greens or something know, right right and the collard <laughs> greens is fucking submerged in, in like turkey sugar, or you know bacon, bacon juice <laughs> right bacon bacon juice. Juice. <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> right so for me it's just about like just kicking your day off with getting those extra nutrients because still I'm struggling you know what I mean like I did try a vegan lifestyle for a bit. Oh yeah, we talked um, about that. that. Yeah, I found that that wasn't exactly sustainable for me because, like, you know, also just pointing back to you know being Native American, like I believe that we can use what spirit has given. You just can't be gluttonous about it, and right. that's the problem: is that people are gluttonous and very um, disrespectful about it. And so I just didn't want my body, you know, on some like fucking apocalypse was tomorrow and the only thing we had was like deer meat left like I don't want my body to like be foreign to that one right you're out here throwing up and when we trying to like get out of here exactly and Romel gotta have to like come pick you up because he's like oh my god (laughs) right right (laughs) and and, and I'm sure if you was vegan he'd be vegan too so y'all both probably gonna be like you both just weak and useless like what the fuck what what y'all got going on (laughs) oh my god um but yeah and it and it did kind of just train me though to to when I can, you know, do, do choose veggies over everything else. But like, don't be down on myself if I want fried chicken. I made fried chicken like two weeks ago, like, cause mm-hmm. I wanted it. But since then, like uh, two days ago, 
I made um, shepherd's pie, you know, vegan shepherd's pie. Like, you know, that that's the lifestyle, but right. still not be down on myself if, you know, I decide you, not to. If you have so, a little yeah. bit of something. Yeah. And then specifically to juicing too, like, I think it's also like a form of meditation, like the process, right? Mm. Just really being in temple, you know, being at the grocery store, understanding your palate and what you like and the things that go together that you enjoy, you know, picking out because now you got to smell the fruit, you got to mm-hmm. feel it, you got to see the size that you want. So doing that and then coming home and saying, okay, this is, this is what I feel like today. And, you know, cutting the skin off of the pineapple and then, you know, being intentful about re- repurposing the skin, you know, boiling, boiling it down to like some type of pineapple tea. Like it's a whole process of, oh my God, I do love myself. Right. And I do love the earth. And, you know, I'm going to drop this off at the um, compost bin, or I'm going to use the lemon peel to create the fragrance through the home and kind yeah. of figure out my passages. Like, it's just this whole, like, thing where you're really just in the space of, like, loving yourself. And I think yeah. that that's what I've I've learned most about it is like yo it really helped me love myself more yeah so it can yeah. be it can be enjoyable once you really yeah. like med- meditate in that experience you just gotta get into it exactly. yeah it's, it's the whole thing like just it's kind of like cooking up. like when you cook exactly. when you first start cooking it's annoying but then you're like oh I actually really like this like it's exactly. like and then you put it into your body it's good for you it's like it's I did good that for you it feels good now you're energized you're like oh shit this is better than a McDonald's burger like yeah right, it is. Right. <laughs> what I remember I'm sure this is definitely fake news to people be saying shit when they were saying that like when you juice like you take all the nutrients out do you remember that talk okay so that is What's true that about? right so there's there's different types of juicers right so your you know less expensive juicers are going to be um I forgot how exactly they say it but the motor runs quickly which means it starts to heat up and you do because like you get most of your nutrients from the skins of things right mm-hmm. so when you're putting let's say an apple into the juicer, you're kind of losing the skin and you're just, you're juicing it out. But once you really get in your vibes, like for instance, like I have a Breville, which was what Q-tip had. I have the cheapest version of Breville. And as we were, you know, Romel and I were really like, you know, researching everything. We learned that the cold press juicer is actually the best juicer because Mm -hmm. it literally, it's like two plates that come and they just literally squish the shit out of the juice. Together, okay. Right. So you're able to retain more juice. And then on, on the cold press machine, you have the, the other juicer apparatus where you take that press and you throw that into the spinning apparatus and you're really pulling out all those nutrients. So I wouldn't say juicing is not a replacement from eating fruits and vegetables. I, let's let's okay, start that's, there. That's what I think. It's not a replacement. Thinking. It's not a replacement. It's like a, let me go ahead and start my day out with this. And then, okay, now when you're cooking breakfast, be more intentful about adding, it doesn't sound like it makes sense, but like you're cooking breakfast, like you need to add a vegetable. Like it can't just be bacon and eggs and pancake, bacon. right? Like yeah. it, needs to be, it needs to be potato or um, sweet potatoes are really good on um, breakfast food. Um, I was doing this one, it was like a, not, not a diet, but like a little, training program they had me eating fucking broccoli at 10 a.m you know what i'm Dang. saying like like but food, that, you need that in the morning like it makes you feel better it. like that bacon and cheese it. that's why you sleepy at work because you yep. have to make it exactly like exactly. and all that dairy so, so let's just remember juicing is not a replacement you need to be eating fresh fruits and vegetables organic if you can trader joe's mm-hmm. is like the perfect place or your local farmers market support local mm-hmm. um business and you know farming yeah but I I love juicing it definitely has completely changed my life and we're gonna have the kids and the babies on to it and, and yes. another thing you can be an unhealthy vegan we you can about be, yes. yeah so like yes. let's throw that out there like make yes. sure if you are a vegan make sure you're not like the just only carb eating type vegan right right it's just not gonna work out right okay <laughs> so we're gonna like transition we're almost about to wrap up um so the man that you be juicing with is your man so we're definitely gonna get into some like more light fun dating type stuff um Mm -hmm. so tell us I guess I do want to this was like a I had no idea that Romel was young I thought that he was probably older than you seriously like because I'm a child I'm I'm immature (laughs) yes and I feel like women a lot of the times um especially like not not even just like all women you Mm -hmm. know we have like our things and it's like okay 
that would have been like an instant no-go for some people. They they'd have been like, oh nah, like, and they would have missed out on like whatever. Well, I don't believe in missing out on things, but you know what I mean? We yeah, kind of yeah. just, yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that and like we can start there and then I have a couple more questions. Okay, cool. So yes, I met Romel when he was 20. I was 26. So that would be four years ago. Um, and that was a no for me in the beginning. I was just like, bro, like you're mad young. And then also to the way that we just started hanging out, like he was like an intern photographer for me and my events. So it was mm. kind of like, I'm like bossing him around and shit. And I'm just like, you don't really want to mix that. Like, I'm like, you you, you don't want that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But he was like super persistent and he courted me like on some real like traditional, like he friend zoned himself because he's playing along on some Virgo psychopath shit, right? He's got like (laughs) a fucking long game here. Virgo. So he really courted me for like a solid, like, six seven months where he's like you know walking me you know to my doorstep and like you know not being aggressive and it's like you know have have a good day and just being like super you know responsible with his manhood into my woman you know Mm -hmm. and I really respected that and there was just something about him that the energy was just very mature like I was just like okay maybe it's not what I thought it was and the things that he wanted to talk about and the fact that he was open to hearing about, you know, my spiritual practices, which is, I hadn't really experienced that up until Ramel. Like, mm-hmm. niggas did not want to talk about that. It's not right. what they want to talk about, you know, mm-hmm. especially growing up in the South and I was dating, you know, the football playing, you know, and no disrespect, I had a great time. I met some <laughs> yeah, great fun. guys, but... <laughs> That's just not what was going on. So I just really valued that. Like he just had a lot to him. And so I remember literally taking him out for his 21st birthday. Um, And maybe a month later, we were in love. Like we weren't, it it wasn't even like, can you be my boyfriend? Can you be my girlfriend? Like that's gonna be my question. Cause I always wonder what, cause sometimes some some people have that moment of like, what made it be like, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. you have all those feelings or you might know, mm-hmm. you know, and you kind of ignore yeah. them or whatever, it depends on the situation. Yeah. But like that moment of, oh, no, nah, we doing this. Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing because I was also just kind of coming out of a very strenuous relationship, like just before Romel. So I kind of was on some like, I kind of want to just be, you know, having a good time. But then I'm also like, I work in the industry and I don't want to be looking like I'm having a good time. So maybe it's cool. And I'm a Libra. Like I, I love being in love. So that's nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think that the moment for me was like, we were, we were already hanging out literally every day. Like we were, we worked together and then we would go get food together. And then he would walk me home. And like he was like the first person and the last person I saw for like a very consistent amount of time and then he's gonna hate me for this um (laughs) (laughs) uh after a party he you know he went for it he went for the kiss right Mm -hmm. and I was like oh not yet (laughs) you were like no I was like time out blood on the blood (laughs) oh my god but I I expressed to him I said yo like I I don't want to do that specifically but I don't want you to like go anywhere. Like I, I, I want this, I, I want this, but I want to, I want to make sure we're intentful and yeah. we're on the same page. And I want to make sure that we've established that friendship because for me, the relationship that I was in before Romel was a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Volatile relationship. Mm-hmm. And I just, made a promise to myself that I couldn't do that shit anymore like right. that was I was like bro no like I, I decided even you that. type shit yeah exactly so with him it was I just wanted to be sure and I wanted him to be sure and then with the age difference I was like bro my mind is in a different space right now like I just don't want you I don't want you to come on and I don't want you to because I'm an alpha woman so I don't want you to feel like I'm making you inferior because I want to be with a man who's the alpha man. So if you're up for that challenge and you can be the alpha man and I can be the alpha woman and we can make this thing work, let's fucking do it. But let's give us a little bit more time it's to take time. that out. Right. Yeah, that's good. So 
for with that like that was just like a, a, a ch- more challenge for him like he was like oh challenge let's really get to yeah. it and we literally so his birthday is in September um my birthday is in October he got me a uh, Fenty that was my first Fenty set oh cute so he got me Fenty and remember that was when Fenty was just a pop-up shop so God knows how long he stood in line for that so right I don't know. he still won't tell me to this day it was it was out that was like um, way, I remember that that was a lot like, it was hard to get like you couldn't really it get was it. hard I had Fenty the first drop because of Romel oh, that's so <laughs> yes funny. so my birthday came around he got me that and then by Christmas um he said he loved me and I was just like don't go anywhere I can't say it back but don't go anywhere Mm -hmm. and then we had a date um we had already planned out a date it was like you know many many petty spa day and then dinner that night and so that was the next day and then when we were at dinner that night I was like I love you too let's just do it and we just been inseparable ever since so I will say like obviously like when it comes to the age difference, like be aware of who you are and what you want and don't lead anybody on and be honest with them. But if that's what they want and y'all are on the same page, like Mm -hmm. it works because in the ways that I'm super immature, like you, you've met, you know, Mm -hmm. such Mm -hmm. a granddad, like the granddad father, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he holds me down in those ways. And then on the other end of that, like I'm such also a playful, fan. like y'all are really playful. Super. We're chill. Like we literally play fight, like, fucking which is amazing. I think that like, that's what you got to hold on to in life. Like you got to have that in you still. Have like. To. like we do dumb shit. We're like, all right, let's just say like Rogo's in the shower. Right. Like I'll cut off all the fucking lights. And have to <laughs> hide, right. And then he comes out and he's just like, baby. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and it's like, we would have never known that if we just would rush into it. You know what I'm saying? And it's That's like, amazing this- lesson that I'm learning here. Cause I was always like a rusher type person, but I yeah. realized after, after healing, I realized I was rushing to get, to gain this, uh, safety, into intimacy and comfort that I could have only found not in, not in those niggas, yeah. but in, in myself Me and in so. God. Mm-hmm. And, and literally like, that's literally where it has come from. So it's like, I would think that it's them, but it's like, no, I'm just looking for this, like, thing to hold on to whatever yeah. so I, I would yeah. rush the process but it's really about getting because like it's like and even if someone's younger or if they're not your type or whatever if you just be their friend and get to know them that will like play out after that's the comfort right like it's that's, just all that's about what you're looking for somebody exactly. to, to like, love you're just you past, somebody to talk to. and someone to love you past like your messy yeah. shit yeah. yeah yeah like shit like that so so yeah. it's like you're not gonna get that if you rush through no, it, which it took no. me until maybe like this, like this year, <laughs> last year, to really like understand that or whatever. Yeah. Shout out to all the Virgo men. I just want to shout say out that. to the Virgo men. They I'll get a you, really, I'll they get a really bad later. rap. They and do. and I will say, okay, he's gonna kill me for this too. <laughs> um, Romel is like the fourth Virgo man in a row that I've dated. And wow, the because my my Virgo is in my Venus is in Virgo. Mm-hmm. so it's how I love to so I, I get it like I get the whole like being detached but also being like really obsessive like that works for me like I, I'm mm-hmm. into it you know mm-hmm. but um I will say that there are undeveloped Virgos that when you when you notice that that's what's going on you need to run it is okay. not a game okay. <laughs> it's not a game do not fucking play around with that energy because I've, I only have well I might even get to go there because I don't want people putting two, two and two together <laughs> right, so, right, right but that that's wild though <laughs> but yes a developed <laughs> Virgo man he is a king and I love Romel and I'm gonna Aww, give him shout out to Romel. a bunch of babies and we're just gonna be like these fucking linen wearing cool ass, wearing ass like, family right right yeah. <laughs> what would you say about this is one thing like being like y- y'all are and Romel by the way y'all is Talented as hell, a photographer. Talented, talented. So good. He's so talented. good. Um, what would you say about being in a relationship young, but both of y'all are young, um, mm-hmm. and chasing your dreams? Because you know how, especially a lot of men and just women like us, it's like, let me put that on the back burner or like, yeah, you kind yeah. of like don't want nobody holding you back, especially right. in the industry. Like, how right. have y'all been able to navigate that? Because I think that partnerships help, it can help elevate you if yes. it's the right one. But Yes, yes. 
you know. So I will say that a, that a part of it was a part of our friendship too, because, okay, so if anybody doesn't know, Ramel is an excellent, skilled um, photographer and creative mm-hmm. director. Um, at Currently at Cinematic, he's a photo and video commissioner as well. So he's just a creative ass person. And for the most part, if anybody is kind of tapped into all the photo shoots that I've done, Romel is my photographer. Like that's mm-hmm. literally how we met. I kind of was on some like, let me finesse this young kid off this photo shoot, right? right? And in his mind, he was like, let me finesse this honey off this photo shoot. Right. So we were just always on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of went into it knowing that we were both just like super uh, like goal oriented. But I think it's it's just really important to, it starts with yourself. Like, do you know what the fuck you want, right? Cause like for me, I know exactly what I want. It may look a little bit differently or it may come at different times, but like, I know exactly what I want and I'm very expressive about that. So when I'm telling him, this is what I want and this is what I need in a partner, it just worked out that that's the same. Like we're both just like hyper creative people. So there are these times where I have to go away for a couple hours just to be by myself. And right. he understands that because he has to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's not mm. something where obviously we miss each other. Like I'll, he'll peek his head in like, I miss right. you. Right. But it's like, you, like y'all take offense. Like, oh, are they mad no, at me or, or whatever? Yeah. No. And even with like with our living situation, um, like currently, which is new, we just started living together. But, you know, right now it's a one bedroom, but I, we know that when we formally live together, it needs to be like a three bedroom. Like you need your space, I need mine. And then we need our space where we coexist, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. being creatives. And I think just being people, we need to kind of really own our individuality and take yeah. that time and find partners that understand that within themselves to the point where they will they will honor that in mm-hmm. you and Romel and I we just we just honor every inch of who we are like yeah are. yeah, yeah. It's not to say that we're perfect we're not fucking perfect of course yeah but we, we honor each other and we respect the spaces that we reside however long those spaces may take to pass or come like we just honor all of those stages of just being because we are so aware of who we are and it really mm-hmm. just starts there it really yep. just starts with yourself. Yep. That's good. That's a good way to end everything. Is there anything else? We know your song is dropping at midnight. Yes. Midnight. So Thursday, so Thursday. And this is coming out yes. on Thursday as well. Mm-hmm. Um, super excited. Dang, yes. that's crazy. Yes. Stream, yes. stream, stream. stream. Put your friends I'll on. have the link in like the description and everything okay. like that. I'll yes. Put, put your it. friends on. Take time. Like, sit with it. It's kind of on some like not as prolific I guess but like you know when to pimp a butterfly came out you can't just listen to it like you gotta you gotta sit with sit it with it literally saying? like so, play, yes exactly it, exactly so I would say just sit with it um I just want everybody to um honor themselves and love themselves and continue extending that to other people let's continue holding each other up especially us being black and brown we if we don't do it nobody else will Mm -hmm. so definitely just make sure you're holding your people down um call your call call your strong friend call your mom she be tripping Mm -hmm. i know (laughs) mom be tripping But call your mom, love on your people, um, and love on yourself. Yes, I love that. I love that. (laughs) So we always end also with what's been bringing us peace of mind um, for the week or even just anything that's not the cliche, like Mm -hmm. in a sense, it could be literally anything. People have said smoking, whatever, like, you know, so like what brings you peace of mind or what has been as of lately? Be Romel, I hate to be corny, but Romel. Oh like, no, that's not corny. You know, like it's really on some like home is where the heart is type shit. Like right. he's my peace. He's my he's my everything. So like when I'm when I'm fucked up, I just I just go sit with him. I don't even gotta always vent. I just go sit with him. So just find something you could sit with and just you know without like you know being on some like energy still and shit. Like just sit, just sit mm-hmm. with something. You know? Whether mm-hmm. it's like. You know, people who hug trees, that's the same premise. You know, they're just right. sitting, they're sitting with what is and sitting with, with, with what's alive. So, mm-hmm. yes, Romel, my king. Yes. <laughs> I, love I love that. I'm going to love you so much. I love you I too. Thank you so I much love, for having me. More, I love the fact that you literally are doing this because I always tell my friends, like, do what you want to do. I think we had this conversation. Do it. This is another, like, lesson I want them to learn. It's like... Mm-hmm. I'm sure to like you you could have all all these thoughts like okay they're gonna think that I only worked in music to like be an artist or they're they're gonna think this think that 
What if they say that I'm trash? Whatever the case may be. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck all that shit. We have okay. one life. Just do it. We have one life. Pivot. Do it. One thing that I definitely want to get more into, which I'm going to like ask you for more advice. Like I definitely want to like start modeling for real, for real. And like mm-hmm. making a portfolio, putting mm-hmm. things out there. Like as you should. Yes, ma'am. You know, like yes, outside yes, of just yeah. like, you know, influencing. I want to actually yeah. do like shit for real yeah yeah so i'm like fuck that shit i'm about to, I'm about to do it like do it. yeah and even sitting with do you it. maybe like oh no nah, you really can like just do whatever you have on your heart so i want y'all all to take that away too just take that and i will say okay one more point to that um mm-hmm. i don't know if everybody knows but denzel washington is an amazing speaker right mm-hmm. and he always has this thing like whenever he speaks to like you know graduating you know uh schools and stuff he says this thing where it's like if it is in you or if it's in your spirit to do it or if it's an idea that you have that's god's confirmation to you that it's already yours mm. you, you're not gonna want to for me like i, I don't want to be a fucking uh, astronaut right right but i do want to be a singer i do want to be a writer i, I want to do these things so that's that's god's con- confirmation that i can already do it so yeah. whatever ideas that any of us have or whatever we want to do like just kind of take a step back and look at your network and look at where you need to be because god has already placed that in your life like yes he so, put it in there yes. he put that thought that seed yes. like for a reason so yes. now and that's what life is about like taking those seeds and making yep. it making yep. it go so yep. oh my gosh okay love you this, this was great yes, I love you so much. Um, love you so much. <laughs>